Okay, you guys, this is going to be another request by Boopop1987. And about a year ago, she asked me to do my top 10 best Liam Neeson films, and I'm here to do that. Um, so if I ever do a best and worst of Liam Neeson films, you'll know what the best ones, or at least a few of them, will be. So starting off in number 10, we have The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Road Wardrobe, I believe Prince Caspian, and I think he was in Dawn Treader as well. Um, I like the first one a lot more than the second. The second one just kind of got like two teenage girly shit with Prince Caspian. But the first one was good. I liked it. I liked this little biblical S standings that the it stands for and that the books would stand for. And Liam Neeson did a good job in it. Voicing, um, what was his name? Was it, uh, uh, was it Alan? Alan? It was something like that. Not completely like the name Alan, but it was something like that. It was close. Um, drop it down below because I kind of forgot his name. I, I know it's similar to Alan, but yeah. At number nine, we have The Gray. I saw this and reviewed it last year, almost a year ago now. This film was awesome. I didn't think I was going to like this movie, but now I can't wait to get it from Walmart because Walmart has it for $12 with the slip. Oh, yeah, I got to get that shit before it's gone. But uh, hopefully it's in good condition. But th this was a good thriller. I liked it. It almost reminded me of, uh, well, it did remind me of um, Frozen, which I reviewed a year before, or two years before I reviewed this one. It was about wolves and, the, and these kids got stuck on a ski ledge. This one's about a plane crash and wolves and a group of survivors in that plane crash. Almost the exact same thing, and it's just great. I love stuff like that in the wilderness, and you got to survive against man-eating, hungry-ass wolves. It's fucking crazy. That fucking cock tease of an ending, though. Shit. Next up, number eight, we have Dark Man. Y'all remember Dark Man? I do. If you were born in the 80s, in the 90s, or if you've been around since the 70s or 60s, you know Dark Man. You know that was a superhero film directed by Sam Raimi. And guess what? It was an R rated superhero film. Something we don't get nowadays. I wish we should. I mean, because I like the 2004 Punisher. But I wish Marvel would do an R-rated, like, extreme R-rated cut of the Punisher how he should be. Not like how that crappy reboot, supposedly, Punisher Warzone was. Ray Stevenson did a good job in it, but that movie just didn't, it seemed cheap and rushed. So, hopefully Marvel does a reboot of that. But Darkman was uh, a, a very underrated superhero film, and it's one of the cult superhero films. I just watched that recently. And guess what? It'll be coming to my childhood movie reviews. So, yeah, because I was a I was a kid when this came out. What was came out in 1990? I was what three years old when this movie was released. <laughs> so, yeah, that that that's classic childhood right there. <laughs> so yeah, number seven we have the 18. I don't know why I like this movie. This movie is a guilty pleasure. It was just a fun stupid movie okay maybe because you had Charlotte Copley as well and he just he just killed it man he was just awesome I think he played Murdoch if I'm not mistaken he was just a crazy ass pilot and oh my god it was just such fun Liam Neeson and Charlotte Copley are the two biggest reasons why that movie was good um, Bradley Cooper just seemed like he was just phoning it in like he usually does in all of his stuff unless it's the place beyond the pines which I hear he probably does a better job in and Rampage Jackson. I'm sorry, but I pity the fool who hired Rampage Jackson. Okay, should have got Mr. T for that part. He can't be that old, can he? How old is Mr. T? <laughs> um, number six. Uh, I'm gonna get hated for this one. Battleship. Yes, I like the Battleship. I did. I like the fact, the flack, the fact Peter Berg actually played Battleship in the movie. Um, that's funny, I see the Battleship board game in Big Lights a week and a half ago. It was the movie version with the little alien ships and all that stuff. But yeah, it was a good time, even though he was only in it for like 10 minutes at the, at the most. But I still count it. I won't count it as part of the best and worst films when, he, when his next film is released. But yeah, because he was in it, I put it in there. Number five, we have Chloe. This is a movie uh, with him. Julianne Moore and uh oh what's her name? I just reviewed her movie a few weeks ago called Gone. 
Amanda Seyfried. Yeah, Amanda Seyfried. Oh my gosh, she gets naked. Well, her and Julia Moore gets naked. Awesome. Oh, and, and, and it's a lesbian love affair. I gotta review that movie. I got to review Chloe. It's awesome. Liam Neeson does a good job as the Julianne Moore's husband. So, yeah. If you haven't seen Chloe, watch that shit. It's all kinds of fucked up, but it's awesome. <laughs> Number four. Gangs of New York. You know, I did not know he was in Gangs of New York until I recently rewatched Gangs of New York. And I'm like, wait a minute. Liam Neeson's in this motherfucker? <laughs> I guess when I, when, I, when I watched Gangs of New York back in two, didn't it come out 2004, I was what? How old was I in 2004? 17 at the time? So, I guess I didn't pay attention to him too much as Leonardo DiCaprio and, um... Ah, oh, shit. He just played Lincoln, too. I believe that was him. Um, oh, crap. Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. Daniel Day-Lewis were the two main stars and Cameron Diaz that Liam Neeson kind of got drowned out. But he's in there, so... Yeah, I'm counting it and Liam... Because Gangs of New York was a fucking awesome movie. You ain't seen that shit? What are you waiting No. <laughs> Three, my favorite Christmas and romantic comedy all in one, Love Actually. They got a new version coming out. I think it's the 10th anniversary edition. I can't wait to pick that up. I was going to pick up the standard one, but I found out they're making a 10th anniversary edition. I know I'm talking too fast for my own good, and I'm sorry about that, but I fucking love Love Actually. Oh, I can't wait to review Love Actually for Christmas. It's, oh, great stuff, man. Oh, my God. All-star cast. Probably the best movie Hugh Grant has ever been in. Cause I really don't care for Hugh Grant movies, but I, that one's an exception. And number two, I know everybody's gonna agree with this one: Schindler's List. Come on, come the fuck on. Okay, that movie's long as shit, but <laughs> but it's a damn good movie. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into full detail about it. You just gotta watch it and just trust me on this when I say, fucking badass. Okay, just, just, just watch it. It's out on Blu-ray. Go get it. I have to get my copy pretty soon, though. And at number one, we have, of course, we all should know what this one is, Taken. Okay? Yeah. Because you know what? I have a very remarkable set of skills. Skills that make me a very dangerous man for people like you. Fucking awesome. Okay? Awesome. Shit. Fucking love Taken. Taken is just one of those those movies that just can't be repeated. I'm sorry, Unknown. You are a boring ass movie, and you will be on the best and worst, or you're gonna be on the worst side of Liam Neeson when he eventually makes a new movie that I will eventually do that video for. So yeah, that is my top ten films of Liam Neeson. Let me know what y'all guys' top ten films of his is. I know, no, I know he was in Star Wars, but when I do my Star Wars review. That is somewhat a plausible meh film. I didn't really care for episode one. He's in episode two, too. He does the voice of Qui Gon in episode two. I kind of forgot where, but he's in there somewhere. So now I gotta rewatch episode two and really pay attention to that one. So, yeah, I'm out.